if you have your bible would you open it together with me to ephesians chapter 6 and verses verses 11 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints this is the verse how paul finishes the topic of the spiritual warfare he talks about the defensive and the offensive parts of the armor of god and he ends the topic of the spiritual warfare saying praying always with all prayer and the supplication in the spirit you know i i love uh, military stuff don't know too much spe specifics on it but i read a study that they said the united states is has more we spend more money on our military than the rest of the seven countries behind us it's over 600 billion dollars and russia spends about 80 something billion dollars a year on the military and we're the most powerful nation on the earth i'm proud to be an american but what makes the United States so powerful is not that every person it has a lot of muscles. It's the military weaponry that we have that are very powerful. In the army, in the army of God, we see there most of the armor of God has to do with the short, um, with the, um, how do you call it? Short term, uh, sh short range. So when it comes to the sword, it's for short range battles but apostle paul ends the talking about the armor of god and he says this he says that the praying with all prayer in all places and everything i believe that prayer is a long term missile that overcomes the barrier of time and the barrier of space with the sword i overcome the enemy that's up close to me with the prayer we can overcome the enemy in the other continent in the other place where there is no cell reception where there is no internet reception and that's why the enemy hates prayer more than anything else because prayer can pen it's like a missile you know sometimes they right now you see the big conflict with korea because korea is developing nuclear missiles that will be able to if they succeed they'll be able to penetrate even come to united states they can sit in their house and program that missile to go all the way across the ocean and hit america see but we already got those missiles as a Christian that missile is your prayer you can sit in your house in your prayer closet and you can direct that prayer to go to other parts of the world and it will go over the media it will go over the ocean it will go over everything because prayer is a long missile that targets the enemy's kingdom I was when I was younger I used to I also I always saw prayer as a battle prayer is a battle prayer is a battle but in here I renewed my mind especially after this conference and I came to this revelation it's very simple that prayer is a weapon my mind is the battle and that's why in your mind you always gotta shoot prayers when you have an idle mind means like when you are not engaged in anything throughout the day you finished mowing the lawn you finish you know washing the dishes you finish cleaning the car you finish your homework or you finish putting the baby to sleep and many times or you're in a shower you're driving and your mind is idle and typically we begin to rehearse what people have said what people have done we rehearse some uncomfortable or unpleasant situations we begin to fret about the things of the tomorrow and in those times your mind goes into attack mode and if in those times you don't fill your mind with prayers toward God without saying those prayers but thinking those prayers you are protecting your mind because your mind is a battlefield and your prayer is a weapon prayer is a weapon in a battlefield of the mind Jesus taught his disciples how to pray you don't see Jesus teaching his disciples how to cast out demons you don't see Jesus teaching his disciples how to heal the sick disciples came to him and said teach us how to pray because every great leader has a great and a very unique life of prayer when I was when John Chi was here with us for a week one of the things that I was benefiting from is the fact that he lived in a house that I had full access to and I had the opportunity to walk in anytime I wanted to go there and one of the things that I was spying on John Chi and trying to suck as much information as possible it's not how he heals people not how he delivers how he prays 
I started to hear from his team where he would pray all night even when he would be here and they would complain in the morning because they said he woke us up at two in the morning to pray and he kept us in prayer all that night and they had to worship with him sing and they said and he doesn't have a good he doesn't have a good voice and so <laughs> it made it harder and so and there they are complaining to me and everything and I asked them what is how does he pray does he sit when he prays does he talk when he prays and they gave me this vague information and so he has a disciple named Raul and so I literally sat for three hours and tried to milk everything from him how does he pray and then we had a chance to go to jacuzzi and a sauna and I asked him how do you pray can you teach me how you pray and they throw these sentences you know uh, always be connected I was like I know how <laughs> just be in a prayerful attitude I know what does it mean what does go through your mind when you do that and he gave me a few little hints that really started to affect my prayer time he says Vlad there's a time when you pray when you separate yourself to prayer he says for me it's from two to about four I said why is it from two to four he said most of the Christians discover that demons wake up at midnight so they pray from midnight to two and Christians go to sleep at two he says that's when I wake up to go pray he says no wonder most people who testify in our ministry see me showing up in their dreams because that's when I'm praying but he says when I don't pray throughout the day when I conversate with you when I speak with you about Jesus he says actually this is also prayer it's a form of prayer because he says after this conversation you leave build up I leave build up why because he says this is a form of prayer he said redefine your definition of prayer he says and when I my mind is idle means I am eating or something he says I can do two, two things I can think about the post on Facebook I can think about what one of people in my ministry did to me. I can think about how someone doesn't like me, unfriended me and doesn't want to shake my hand. How someone prefers someone else over me. I can think about that. He says, or I can do this. Lord, give me more of you. Take more of me. And I said, what if you just repeat that? He says, I repeat that for 16 years. I repeat that. I repeat that. I repeat that. He says, take a verse from Psalms and just before you go to sleep, repeat that he says what you're doing is you're sending the signal create within me a clean heart renew a steadfast spirit in me banish me not from your presence take not your holy spirit from me create it in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me and this what happens is your mind is now sending missiles your mind is connected that's why apostle paul says pray always with all kinds of prayers prayer isn't limited to the time of prayer what do not allow your mind to be vacant throughout the day fill it with one psalm or one verse where it constantly sends out to God why because that is your defense in the spiritual world amen, amen. prayer is a weapon your mind is the battle this weekend last weekend we've saw it once again how prayer prayer hurts the devil we see that prayer sometimes it hurts me because maybe there's still a little bit of the devil left oh it's just a battle prayer is not a battle your mind is a battle prayer is a weapon i want you to we all saw that and it really encouraged our faith but i want you to fix your eyes on the screen and watch this deliverance where for 20 seconds where the demon said what your prayer does to the demons go ahead you know, I must set them on fire. Just like I'm going to set you on fire in your ministry. I hate you. In good generation. I hate all of you. I hate you. Why? I hate all of you. Why do you hate us? Stop freaking praying. Too much prayer. Stop praying. Stop it. You don't like prayer? No. No. What does prayer do to you? You burn me. You burn me. You burn me. Amen. One time God told Gideon, you're a strong man. Gideon says, yeah, right. God sent him. He says, I want you to hear what the Midianites say about you. He went and he heard how Midianites had a dream. And there's a loaf of bread that rolled down into the camp of Midianites. And then the, the camp was destroyed. And the other guy translates the dream. And Gideon is spying and hearing, is dropping. And the other guy said, that loaf is Gideon. He's going to destroy all of us. Gideon says, well, yeah, I am strong. <laughs> Let this be the reminder. Even if your prayer, you don't feel anything through it, it burns the demons. 
it burns Satan and it burns his kingdom. Can somebody say amen? And guys, this makes us feel really good. I don't know who knows us, but if demons know hand regeneration, we made it. <laughs> amen. In Exodus chapter 17 verse 11 says the following. And it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. I want you to see that Moses goes up on the mountain. And when he raised his hands, Joshua was on the bottom of the mountain. Joshua would be winning. When Moses' hands got tired, Joshua was losing. It's interesting to point out that it wasn't a choice for Moses' hands to be brought down. It was fatigue. But the enemy didn't care whether it was fatigue or not. He was prevailing. So Moses found a tip. He asked Aaron and her. He asked other guys to help him hold his, hold his hands so that Joshua can keep on winning. Your life has two parts. The Moses on the mountain and the Joshua on the bottom of the mountain. It's the things you do in your prayer closet and it's the things you do in the marketplace. It's the things you do in your prayer and the things you do in your marriage. And these two areas of your life, they have a connection. If your prayer life starts going weaker, your morality starts going weaker. Your other areas will begin to suffer if your prayer life begins to dry up. So that's why as a Moses, as Aaron, we come to our church today and we encourage us, let's not let down our hands just because you got a baby. Just because you got a second job. Just because you got discouraged. Just because maybe you feel tired. Just because maybe your, your schedule right now conflicts with your priorities. You may not be able to pray as you used to pray. But don't let, let go of your prayer. Why? Because there will be repercussions on the bottom of the mountain. Amen. Amen. I like this clip that I saw about an eagle attacking a snake. You can go ahead and play. If you can mute the music. And so for those of you who are watching, you can zo zoom in just for a second. I want you to see how an eagle attacks a snake. When an eagle reaches to the world of the snake, and this particular snake, it lives in the water and it snatches the snake out of the water. And it takes the snake out of its comfortable zone. It begins to take the snake up. See, you have to understand the snake in the air has no stamina. And it has no fighting chance though you see the snake tries to attack the eagle but it has no leverage against the eagle because it's been taken out of its comfort zone into the comfort zone of an eagle. See every time you pray you're taking the devil into the air well he has no leverage. Every time you spend time with the Holy Spirit what you're doing is you're taking the enemy out of the place of his leverage area and his leverage area is flesh. When you take it up he cannot fight you back. Afterwards you wound him and you destroy him. That's why he'll do whatever he can to keep you away from praying. To keep you on the ground. To keep you in the area of flesh. But we are going to be a fighting church. And the enemy, he already said he hates our church and he's going to hate it even more. Because we love Jesus and we want to see the works of the devil destroyed in our family and in our region. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say hallelujah? Can somebody say hallelujah? Your prayer burns demons. Your prayer is a weapon. It's a long-range missile against the plans of the enemy. Use that missile. Unleash that missile in Jesus mighty name. Don't just spare anything from the enemy. If we keep our hands high, if we keep our knees strengthened, the battle will be won on the bottom of the mountain. We will see people being healed. We will see people getting out of wheelchairs. We will see as many as we have prayer requests, that's going to be the testimonies. Our prayer class will become a point of contact for people to receive healing in their life. Healings will happen on the streets. Healings will happen in home groups. Healings will happen before even come people come to prayer line. Healings will happen during worship. During live stream, the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost is going to win. Why? Because there's Moses on the mountain that is praying. Can somebody say amen? Matthew 21 verse 13, Jesus said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer. 
but you made it a den of thieves. I genuinely believe there is no neutral, there is no neutral ground. We we'll either be a house of prayer or we become a den of thieves. A den of thieves. Thieves speak of sin, demons and curses. A den is a cave. When we do not allow ourselves, don't live up to a high calling or living a life of prayer, we will be lowered down to a miserable statue of being a den. means a hiding place for demons. That's why many times we see us praying. Anywhere you are, demon hiding. Why are they hiding? Because prayerlessness creates a hiding place for demons. Prayerfulness creates a hiding place for the Holy Spirit. Worry, anxiety can only flourish in the place prayerlessness creates. Fear can only flourish in the place prayerlessness creates. Jesus drew the line. He didn't punish us by saying if you don't pray I'll send demons your way. He said this world is brutal. It's black and white. It's evil or good. If you choose not to live up to a high lofty calling you have to pray with the creator of the universe you'll be brought down to become a hiding place of every foolish stupid demonic thing and we say no to the den of thieves. We say yes to the Holy Spirit. We say yes to a secret place with God. We say no to a secret sins with the devil. Can somebody say amen? We say yes to the Holy Spirit and we say no to prayerlessness. Amen. David, when David was anointed by God to fight, we know that God was with him. But toward the end of his life, David felt like he already conquered so much. He fought so much. He deserves a break. And the Bible says all of his men went to fight and David stayed back home. He slept all day, didn't do anything. And, and I want to just address this excuse that some of us have bought into. I don't need to pray. I have prayed enough. I deserve a break. Or maybe I didn't see much results from my prayer. And David bought into this excuse. I don't need to go fight. And I want you to remember this. When you don't fight the battle you're called for, you'll end up fighting a battle you can never win. David fought a battle with lust and this battle he lost. I know this, when it's hard, when my body is weak, when I have an excuse like everyone else, prayer isn't for me, I am just tired, I don't have time, I did all of these excuses. I know one thing, it's the enemy luring me out of my anointing to, to take me into the ground where he can beat me. Because see, if I take him to the air, I beat him. If he keeps me in the ground, he bites me and he brings me down. I am an eagle. I was meant for the skies. And I take the enemy there, that's where he suffocates. That's where he cannot stand. The electrifying air of the Holy Ghost. The electrifying air of the presence of God. Church, God is calling you to prayer. God is calling you to pray. God is calling you to intercession. You're only gonna live this life once. Year 2017 will only happen in your life once. Live it without regret. Live it for the Lord. Don't buy into excuses. When angels brought Lot out of Sodom, they said, Lot, escape for your life. Lot, run to the mountains. Don't stay in the plain. But Lot said this, no, my lords, I can't. I can't run to the mountains. I am too old. My knees are old. I, I, I don't like hiking. Can I just go into one of the caves? And he went to one of the caves. But see God wanted to meet with Lot on the mountain. He settled for the cave of compromise. We know what happened in that cave. Immorality happened in that cave. Weird stuff happened in that cave because he refused to run the mountain. God is calling you. God knows your busy schedule but God also knows in less than 50, 60 years, you'll be six feet under and your schedule won't matter. God knows the highest calling on this earth is prayer. Because the highest calling in heaven is prayer. Through prayer, we move the hand of God. Through prayer, we mess with the tactics of the devil. And through prayer, we stay in the area of our anointing. Through prayer, we take the enemy into a zone he is uncomfortable and he has no stamina to resist us. He has no way to fight us back. Why? Because it's the zone of the Holy Ghost. 
it's our zone that's why Jesus says be a house of prayer if you can't pray an hour pray five minutes if you can't pray five minutes pray one minute but live a life of prayer church opens at five o'clock in the morning but at six o'clock we have a designated hour of power hour of prayer Monday through Friday different home groups will be leading these prayers we have people here from other cities people who are watching us from other countries you can join us during that time on Friday night from nine o'clock to about 10 30 there is prayer going on and Sunday morning also at 9 15 there is prayer there is prayer our church you may say that's a lot of prayer no that's not enough prayer we will have a prayer 24 7 there are movements today where for 18 to 20 years prayer has been non-stop for 24 hours the Lord placed the vision in the heart where we will see that why because we will see people being saved every day people being healed every day the enemy being defeated every day home girls being released every day and you being changed every day can somebody say amen can somebody say hallelujah like we always say devil will have a nervous breakdown because you and I live in three cities because we love Jesus and we love to pray amen I want you to rise to your feet thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come